Hey, I'm Anthony Romano, and this video is going to break down some of the questions on what's the best fasting length for intermittent fasting. So granted, if you're new to intermittent fasting, some of these recommendations might fly over your head. Some things might shock you, such as the fact that fasting is the same thing as the keto state. And the longer you fast, the longer you're going to produce more ketones and get into nutritional ketosis. So because example, you know, when you're not eating anything, you're not eating sugar and not eating sugar is the only requirement for keto. So it's not, you know, low protein. It's not dumping fat on everything. It is again, not eating sugar. So I'm going to explain these things to you in this video, just some general tips as to when to use certain fasts, how you should look at them and how that will help you decide what kind of fast you want to do and how often you want to do them. So like this video, subscribe, that will make YouTube show my content to more people and be amped for the keto manifesto and be amped for the keto shred program. Let's get into it. So fasting window lengths, what is the best one? If we're talking intermittent fasting, okay, that's the types of things you want to understand here. For starters, if you're new, obviously you want to start off smaller. For the start, I'm going to say, look at fasting intermittently as a linear thing. Okay. You want to look at it as the shorter you do it, the less benefit, the longer you do it, the more benefit. So it's a linear relationship. Okay. So when we're talking about the benefits of fasting, what are they? They're autophagy. So cellular cleansing. And of course they are accessing more fat metabolism and creating more ketones through ketogenesis in your liver. Now, basically what's going to happen is the longer you fast, the more ketones you're going to produce, the more stable your blood sugar is going to go. But if you're somebody who's been, you know, having a hard time fasting, it's probably because your carbohydrates presence in your diet was rather high. Not to say that carbs are a bad thing, but it was high and that's making your blood sugar tank so that when you're fasting, you find it harder to fast. You find it harder to work out. You find it harder to maintain your focus while you're working because you're hungry. That is a sign that your blood glucose control is not the best that it could be. Okay. And if you get a blood test and look at your HbA1c, hemoglobin A1c, which is basically a measure of glycated protein in your blood, or you look at your fasting glucose measurement, you will see whether or not you have good blood glucose control. So that's one way to test this for yourself. But 16 hour fasts, it's a good way to start. It's challenging enough for newbies, but nothing that's going to make your body start to lose electrolyte a little bit, or basically nothing that's going to throw you out of whack if you haven't done low carb ketogenic diets or fasting practices for amounts of days before. Now, 18 hours, this is where you start to get more of the autophagy benefits coming in. So the cellular cleansing, if you're somebody who fasts every day longer than 18 hours, you're going to be getting more autophagy. Okay. Granted entering the ketogenic state in general is going to be conducive to autophagy. So keto diets are conducive to this, but you're going to get advanced levels of autophagy and cellular cleansing. The longer you fast on keto, the longer you fast in general, or the lower your calories are in a ketogenic state. A lot of fasting's triggers do are due to, you know, protein availability and things of that nature. Basically your body's assessment of, is there enough primary resources coming in? Are there enough amino acids swirling around? Things like that. Are we eating enough food? So those are going to be the triggers for autophagy, but in general, you can access it more by fasting longer or entering keto. So 18 hours is generally a good starting point. If somebody is having a hard time moving from 18 to 20 hours, here's one great tip. For starters, if you exercise during an intermittent fast, you are going to advance. It's basically like time traveling your body to trick it into thinking it fasted for 20 something hours. Because when you clear out your glucose from the fast, your body's going to start basically triggering autophagy more because the levels of some of those other resources your body's keeping tabs on start to go down and your body goes, oh, there's a higher demand to break down our own fuel here from endogenous sources. So ultimately the 20 hour fast is definitely a great milestone to try to hit. This is something I do every day just reflexively because I've been doing fasting for basically 10 years and keto for pretty much nine. So, well, nine and a half. So essentially when we're talking about <laughs> amplifying the effectiveness of your fast, when we're talking about an 18 hour fast, then exercising at some point during the fast, especially the longer you're into it is going to clear out more of your blood glucose. And Again, this is going to trigger some of, the, some of those other autophagy benefits I was speaking about. But in general, it's going to put more demand on your body to metabolize resources for fuel. So you're going to d dive deeper into fat metabolism. Your body is at first going to have a blood sugar spike from the cortisol and the stress, and then you're going to get more ketone production in your liver. So this is, again, your body's natural mechanism of diving deeper into ketosis as things go on. And fasting and then working out 
is basically speeding your body ahead. Okay, as I said there a minute ago. And that's also a great way to maximize the effectiveness of fasts if you're somebody who doesn't want to do too many of them. If you're somebody who only wants to do, you know, two or three fasts a week, then do an 18 or a 20 hour, even a 16 hour if you're trying to use to break through into 18 and work out during the fast. From there, you're going to basically get your body to the next level. Okay. It's, it might be a bit difficult. And for some people who are having difficulties working out while fasting, you should watch my other videos, but essentially you need more electrolyte. It's either an, a hydration issue or a blood sugar issue. If it's a blood sugar issue, it's going to take time. And the remedy to that is to do some ketogenic dieting to get your blood sugar lower on the whole. But at the same time, when we're talking about hydration, you need sodium and potassium. And I'm not going to explain the pro protocols in this video. Actually, fuck it. I will. Cause I'm a nice guy. Essentially, I recommend for people who are newbies intermittent fasting, take a quarter teaspoon of potassium chloride, not pills, chloride, the salt form. Okay, don't question me on this. I'm not going to explain it in this video, but I'm giving you the, the dose here. Okay, and then a quarter teaspoon of salt. So pink salt, redmond salt, Celtic salt, the good quality salt that's real salt, not just table salt or whatever the hell. So you take that and you consume that during the latter hours of your fast. And that's going to hydrate your body more because as you fast, you lose electrolytes, even if you're drinking water. Okay, water is just putting in drinking water is just putting it into your body you don't have the electrolytes to retain it in the proper manner so this is why consuming a quarter teaspoon of potassium and salt is one way to sort of amplify the pump that's lit literally in your cells the intracellular sodium potassium pump so you're going to get a better workout and you're also going to get better hydration so you will feel better during the fast especially because if you are very low on salt your body's going to jack up your insulin this is actually okay this is a killer tip for people who are having a hard time fasting and you're relatively new or you're trying to break through to higher numbers that you haven't hit before. In general, if you fast for a long time and your sugar lowers, right? And then your salt lowers over time. In the absence of salt and sugar, your body has very few resources to retain water. So it's going to jack up your insulin artificially, even though there's no food. Well, it's not going to jack it up, but it's going to raise it slightly enough to the point where you feel hungry because your body's saying, hey, we need more electrolyte and either carb or sodium to hydrate better. So at this point, you're going to feel hungry. And if you have the salt beforehand, the salt and potassium, <clears throat> the salt and potassium beforehand, then you are going to prevent that problem from happening and you'll probably be able to fast longer. So to hit those new heights. So this is how to move up from 16 to 18 to 20 hour fasts. And during prolonged fast, people will have very high doses of these electrolytes. A lot of people call it snake juice because fellow Canadian Cole Robinson uh, has a great prolonged fasting protocol with it. So all credit where it's due. Cole's great uh, from everything I've seen. But at the same time, I am recommending more conservative electrolyte doses here because people are still eating. This is the context of intermittent fasting. And during intermittent fasting, you're going to be consuming foods in a few hours where you have, you know, other electrolytes coming in and too much electrolyte is going to make you crap yourself. So this is a topic I say all the time because you don't want to have too much electrolyte. Do not have too much salt, sodium, or potassium. Okay. Do not do it or other minerals, but essentially, and also don't have too much potassium because it'll kill you. So don't have like tablespoons and tablespoons of potassium okay just keep it at a quarter teaspoon okay of both and that's a great intermittent fasting you know training wheels to add on there some little crutches to make it easier so on top of this you can also start using bulletproof coffees to extend fasting time this is called fat fasting now during fat fasting you can watch my other videos i also explain that you can eat some foods that are predominantly only fat so avocados okay you know certain nuts that don't have phytic acid or other you know carb technically or, or fibrous layers around them. Okay. These are things that you could do, but I'm not explaining fat fasting in this video, but fat fasting, the easiest way is bulletproof coffee because it guarantees that it's going to be effective and it's not going to disrupt, you know, little mistakes that people might make from eating the wrong foods. Cause example, people are hitting me up saying, Oh, can I have bacon while I'm fat fasting? No, you can't. Cause bacon has protein. That is not fat fasting. Even though bacon's delicious, you can't do it. It won't work for the purposes of fasting and training your body to think it's fasting. So the short answer is bulletproof coffee is another great tip and look into how to make that for my other videos. But the long answer is fat fasting on the whole is another great tip to do this. And if you want to learn the proper foods for it, watch my videos. So this is the video on how to improve your fasting from 16 to 18 to 20 hours. And basically what the benefits are of each. Okay. The longer you go, the more autophagy, the more cellular cleansing, other benefits of that nature and heightened fat burning and also heightened, you know, sensitization of your blood sugar, your blood glucose. But overall, look at this video as a great guideline for people who are newbies and advanced at intermittent fasting and understanding how it fits in. Because as long as you're doing it on a regular basis, 
you know, then you're getting a lot of the benefit as much as you prefer. And that's, I'm saying that loosely because it's not as if you have to fast a certain amount of times per week, especially if you're using some of the tactics I mentioned earlier about if you want to fast less per week, then simply exercise more during the fast. This is going to create basically amplify the benefits. Okay. That is it. Leave me some questions and look up some of my other videos. If you have other ones that I probably answered already, but besides that, thank you for your support. I'm Anthony Romano. Peace. Thank you.